The Hundred Days Offensive was a series of massive Allied offensives which ended the First World War. Beginning with the Battle of Amiens on the Western Front, the Allies pushed the Central Powers back, undoing their gains from the German Spring Offensive. The Germans retreated to the Hindenburg Line, but the Allies broke through the line with a series of victories, starting with the Battle of St. Quentin Canal on 29 September. The offensive, together with a revolution breaking out in Germany, led to the armistice of of November 1918 which ended the war with an Allied victory. The term Hundred Days Offensive does not refer to a battle or strategy, but rather the rapid series of Allied victories against which the German army had no reply. Chapter 1 – Background The German Spring Offensive of the German Army on the Western Front had begun on 21 March 1918 with Operation Michael, and had petered out by July. The Germans had advanced to the River Marne, but failed to achieve their aim of a victory that would decide the war. When the German Operation Marne Reims ended in July, the Allied Supreme Commander, Ferdinand Foch, ordered a counter-offensive, which became known as the Second Battle of the Marne. The Germans, recognizing their untenable position, withdrew from the Marne to the north. For this victory, Foch was granted the title Marshal of France. After the Germans had lost their forward momentum, Foch considered the time had arrived for the Allies to return to the offensive. The American expeditionary force under General John J. Pershing had arrived in France in large numbers and had invigorated the Allied armies with its extensive resources, 472 Pershing was keen to use his army as an independent force. The British expeditionary force had been reinforced by large numbers of troops returned from the Sinai and Palestine campaign and from the Italian front, and by replacements previously held back in Britain by Prime Minister David Lloyd George. 155 the military planners considered a number of proposals. Foch agreed to a proposal by Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig, Commander-in-Chief of the BIF, to strike on the River Somme, east of Amiens and southwest of the site of the 1916 Battle of the Somme, to force the Germans away from the vital Amiens-Paris railway, 472 the Somme was chosen because it remained the boundary between the BIF and the French armies, along the Amiens-Roy Road, allowing the two armies to cooperate. The Picardy terrain provided a good surface for tanks, unlike in Flanders, and the defences of the German Second Army under General Georg von der Marwitz were relatively weak, having been subjected to continual raiding by the Australians in a process termed peaceful penetration. Chapter 2 – Battles Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Advance in Picardy Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Subsection 2 – Battle of Amiens the Battle of Amiens opened on 8 August, with an attack by more than ten Allied divisions, Australian, Canadian, British and French forces, with more than 500 tanks, 497 through careful preparation, the Allies achieved surprise, 20, 95 the attack, led by the British Fourth Army, broke through the German lines, and tanks attacked German rear positions, sowing panic and confusion. By the end of the day, a gap 15 miles wide had been created in the German line south of the Somme. The Allies had taken 17,000 prisoners and 339 guns. Total German losses were estimated to be 30,000 men, while the Allies had suffered about 6,500 killed, wounded and missing. The collapse in German morale led Erich Ludendorff to dub it the Black Day of the German Army, 20, 95 The advance continued for three more days but without the spectacular results of the 8th of August, since the rapid advance outran the supporting artillery and ran short of supplies. During those three days, the Allies had managed to gain 12 miles. Most of this was taken on the first day as the arrival of German reinforcements after this slowed the Allied advance. On the 10th of August, the Germans began to pull out of the salient that they had managed to occupy during Operation Michael in March, back towards the Hindenburg Line. Chapter 2 Section 2 – Somme On 15 August, Foch demanded that Haig continue the Amiens offensive, even though the attack was faltering as the troops outran their supplies and artillery and German reserves were being moved to the sector. 
Haig refused and prepared to launch a fresh offensive by the Third Army at Albert, which opened on 21 August. 713 to 4 The offensive was a success, pushing the German Second Army back over a 34 miles front. Albert was captured on the 22nd of August. The attack was widened on the south, by the French 10th Army starting the Second Battle of Nouillon on the 17th of August, capturing the town of Nouillon on the 29th of August. On the 26th of August, to the north of the initial attack, the 1st Army widened the attack by another 7 miles with the Second Battle of Arras of 1918. Bapaume fell on the 29th of August. Chapter 2 Section 3, Advance to the Hindenburg Line With the front line broken, a number of battles took place as the Allies forced the Germans back to the Hindenburg Line. East of Amiens, with artillery brought forward and munitions replenished, the 4th Army also resumed its advance, with the Australian Corps crossing the Somme River on the night of 31 August, breaking the German lines during the Battle of mont saint -Contain. On 26 August, to the north of the Somme, the 1st Army widened the attack by another 7 miles with the 2nd Battle of Arras of 1918, which includes the Battle of the Scarpe and the Battle of drocourt quaint line. South of the Biff, the French 1st Army approached the Hindenburg Line on the outskirts of St. Quentin during the Battle of Savy Dallon, 128-9 and the French 10th Army approached the Hindenburg Line near Lorne during the Battle of Vauxhallen, 125 The British 4th Army approached the Hindenburg Line along the St. Quentin Canal, during the Battle of Ipihi. By the 2nd of September, the Germans had been forced back close to the Hindenburg Line from which they had launched their offensive in the spring. Chapter 2 Section 4, Battles of the Hindenburg Line Foch planned a series of concentric attacks on the German lines in France, with the various axes of advance designed to cut German lateral communications, intending that the success of an attack would enable the entire front line to be advanced, 205-6 The main German defences were anchored on the Hindenburg Line, a series of defensive fortifications stretching from Kearney on the Aisne River to Arras. Before Foch's main offensive was launched, the remaining German salients west and east of the line were crushed at Havrincourt and saint Miel on 12 September and at the Battle of Ipihi and the Battle of the Canal du Nord on 27 September. 217 The first attack of the Grand Offensive was launched on 26 September by the French and the 8th in the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. On 28 September, the army group under Albert I of Belgium, attacked near Ypres in Flanders. Both attacks made good progress initially but were then slowed by supply difficulties. The Grand Offensive involved attacking over difficult terrain, resulting in the Hindenburg Line not being broken until 17 October. On 29 September, the central attack on the Hindenburg Line commenced, with the British 4th Army attacking in the Battle of St. Quentin Canal and the French 1st Army attacking fortifications outside St. Quentin. By 5 October, the Allies had broken through the entire depth of the Hindenburg defences over a 19 miles front, 123 General Rawlinson wrote, had the botch not shown marked signs of deterioration during the past month, I should never have contemplated attacking the Hindenburg line. Had it been defended by the Germans of two years ago, it would certainly have been impregnable. On 8 October, the 1st and 3rd British armies broke through the Hindenburg line at the Second Battle of Cambrai. This collapse forced the German High Command to accept that the war had to be ended. The evidence of failing German morale also convinced many Allied commanders and political leaders that the war could be ended in 1918. Previously, all efforts had been concentrated on building up forces to mount a decisive attack in 1919. Chapter 2 Section 5 Subsequent operations. Through October, the German armies retreated through the territory gained in 1914. The Allies pressed the Germans back toward the lateral railway line from Metz to Bruges, which had supplied the front in northern France and Belgium for much of the war. As the Allied armies reached this line, the Germans were forced to abandon increasingly large amounts of heavy equipment and supplies further reducing their morale and capacity to resist. There were many casualties in the Allied and German armies. Rearguard actions were fought during the pursuit to the cellar, Battle of Courtrai, 
Battle of Mont d'Origny, Battle of the Sella, Battle of Lys and Escort, Battle of the Serre, Battle of Valenciennes, the Battle of the Sambre, the Battle of Thierrec, and the Passage of the Grand Hanel, with fighting continuing until the last minutes before the armistice took effect at 11 o'clock on the 11th of November 1918. The last soldier to die was Henry Gunther, one minute before the armistice came into effect.